Hi, my name is Jos Smolders, and this is Thursday Afternoon Talks. This time we discuss Delirious Cartographies by Richard Scott, released on vinyl, CD and stream by Arbitrary. This episode we discuss an album by Richard Scott. Um, I've already made the introduction, so we know that it's about Delirious Cartographies, an album which is released on vinyl and CD and streaming through the Danish label. Uh, I have to look that up. Arbitrary. It's actually release number 13. Um, I have known Richard Scott already for quite a few years. Uh, I heard about about him uh, when he was uh, still uh, an, a resident in uh, at Stijm in Amsterdam, where he worked on a few controllers for a Bukla synthesizer. And um, I met... Richard Scott for the first time when I visited uh, Rob Hordijk's uh, workshop uh, because uh, Richard had already bought a synthesizer system from uh, Rob and they were discussing all kinds of technicalities and uh, I was going to buy one and so we got into a conversation and I uh, got to know Richard. He lives in Berlin he is originally from the United Kingdom, but he also improvises a lot. So he's a lot on stage. Those performances are often recorded. So you can look them up on YouTube and see what he does. For the most part, I think it's very, very, very complex. Um, uh, and it's quite hard for me to follow what he is actually trying to express other than uh, working with dynamics and a lot of um, different notes and sounds that uh, that come from uh, his um, his system that he uh, he builds himself and this album uh, when I heard this one, I thought, oh, wow, this is not an improvisation. This is really um, a composition. Uh, it's very well constructed. Uh, it's very well thought. And uh, I, re I really liked it. And that's actually the reason that I thought, okay, we uh, need to uh, bring this album also into this uh, series of... Um, Thursday afternoon talks. But Frans, you have reviewed it for Vital Weekly. What were your thoughts on this album? Um, well, I, I like the album. That's, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I was, when I was listening and writing a review, I thought, um, like I always do, or mm. almost always, about the nature of uh, modular music. Mm. Um, because sometimes I have the idea, and I'm not a, I'm not a modular musician myself, but mm. I have the idea that this whole modular thing exists in real time. So people like Richard Scott go on stage; mm -hmm. they have 
whatever kind of setup and either solo or in, in collaboration with other people, mm-hmm. they do improvisation. Mm-hmm. Um, so in this case, I understood that he um, recorded a lot of sounds at home. Mm-hmm. And in like the studio. A, yeah. Or in the studio, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which these days, same thing, I guess. Um, <laughs> um, and then he edited the sounds from whatever he recorded into mm-hmm. the piece of music yeah. that, or piece of music that are on the CD. Mm-hmm. So what's the difference? What's, what's the, the added value of this being a modular thing? Yeah. And that's, that's something that, that, that I thought uh, Richard was also doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in, in that sense, he's very much like the music concrete mm-hmm. composer in, the, in this very tradition yeah. Um, and other than other other people, he's working from a modular um, perspective mm-hmm. and not, say, uh, computer processing. Like, no. You know, like a lot of the release on Amprand Digital. Yes. So you were talking about improvisation versus composition. Mm. Um, of course, uh, like any instrument, uh, you can use the modular system also in a live situation. Uh, it's just that uh, when you improvise, you have to prepare for a sort, a certain set of sounds that you can produce uh, easily. Uh, so you have to know your instrument quite well, which is actually quite the same as when you play. A, you are a saxophone player. You really need to know what your instrument is capable of and how to do that in order to instantly react uh, on the situation in, a, in an improvisation. Yeah, well, well, interestingly, I didn't know that uh, that Scott is a improviser or mm. that it, 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 his main body of work is with improvisation. Mm-hmm. That I didn't know. I was, oh, okay, you, you told me this I'm, I'm, and I read the bio afterwards. Yeah. Uh-huh. I was I was quite surprised by it. Yes, um, and why were I, you surprised? Well, I had this, I, I had this idea that he was more um, um, how do I say a, a purist sort of guy. I have a modular, I'm, and that's what I do. And yeah. um, and I, I must admit, yeah, I, I I'm more more into things being composed or. At least mm-hmm. have to give the, the notion that it's composed, and yeah. it's not yeah. to, you know, uh, you go on social media and yeah. somebody somebody says, "Oh, I have a I have a new modular setup," and you see a whole thing bleeping and there's a lot, a lot of cables <laughs> and lots of lights. Yeah. But the only thing, the only thing you, you hear is like whack 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 whack, and it's like, okay, <laughs> what, why why are you showing this? Um, uh-huh. It's it's uh, I I have no idea. I sometimes think, yeah, it's oh, I want to show off. I have uh, this, this particular bit. patch, uh, like somebody would say, guitarist would say, you know, I have this Stratocaster or Les yeah. Paul 1950, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, so, but I, is that, no I mean, so uh, do I understand you correctly when you say, like, um, you think that a modular in an improvisation situation does not deliver? What you expect from it? Um, I've I've seen cases uh, where people don't deliver. I, and like I said, I didn't I didn't see what it's called. There are not very uh, capable improvisers. There are some really good ones. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, at one point, ten, fifteen, now nah, ten years ago, um, the laptop was abandoned from stage because mm-hmm. it was bo- it was boring. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then everybody showed up with a modular synthesizer, and everybody's like, "Oh wow, this is it!" Yeah, but like the laptop, you don't know as as an audience, you don't know what what it is. Mm-hmm. What's going for all, on? For, yeah. For for all we know, there's still a tape playing in the background, and somebody's mm-hmm. flicking some knobs or some changing some cables and yeah, you know, yeah, rewiring patches. Uh, but it's all planned. You know, you know, it's. Uh, in, in that way, it's, it's the, the I always say jokingly, the, the modular is a new laptop. 
Uh-huh. Uh, um, well, um, yeah, mm, maybe, no, I, maybe I don't. I don't think so. Uh, I think the the modular is uh, an instrument with a lot of capabilities. Um, but what I most times see is that people with a lap, uh, sorry, with a modular, um, sort of fall back onto four quarter music, like. Um, Columbus. Yeah, you put on a sequencer, you have a, a, a lot of voices. And so, but, but in fact, the capabilities of a modular system uh, are hardly used because everybody goes back to there's a baseline and it's got an arpeggio. And um, we filter like, just like. Uh, um, Armin van Buren uh, uses uh, to do to bring uh, things to a certain uh, climax, and so I, well, everybody has to do what they think uh, is right, and I think that that uh, you, hey, you were talking about uh, uh, Colin Benders, uh, he reaches a, a large audience, although I don't still think it's not uh, Armin van Buren uh, 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 numbers, um, but I. I that's what I also said, like um, the modular is just an instrument and uh, it can do a lot of things. I mean, if you, if we're speaking of a, a guitar and uh, most people uh, use a guitar to play a nice harmonic uh, or screaming uh, rock and roll uh, music, mm-hmm. but Keith Rowe, I mean, also uses a guitar. So, the things that he does are also possible with a, with a guitar. It's the same instrument in in, in essence. Yeah, yeah. that was true. So um, I think this album uh, uses modular, but it lo- uses a lot of systems. It in in essence, it's a it's an electronic uh, sound source. Uh, let's let's uh, go to that objective um, name. And um, and he also uses field recording huh? in the sense from that that he uses street sounds and he uses vocal sounds like a very trivial discussion or talk is uh, going uh, on in the background at a certain point. Um, but uh, he does tell us a story. Uh, I've um, looked at the first track. It's called "Fragments of an Everyday Cosmos," which is actually a very interesting title because it's it has the name cosmos in it which is all encompassing of course and he also uses the word fragments which is means that he's very precisely uh, looking at certain uh, parts of that uh, cosmos and you can hear that in the uh, composition let's listen to another part of that track with which we started this uh, episode. In your reception you're always like measuring, can you hear in the background the drum, but you can also not hear it because you know the drum is coming. And And you're you're concentrating on whatever it is you're doing yeah. Or, yeah but when you hear the tram on the recording it's unbelievable it's so loud and so powerful no it's the but in fact it is not yeah but when you hear it
So that was um, track one, uh, another part that we uh, listened to. Um, I think that uh, these sounds are uh, quite well balanced. Uh, Franz, you told me that you uh, actually have a problem with the use of, of uh, vocals or, or voices in, in this uh, piece or in general, for, uh, maybe? Yeah, in general. Um, mm -hmm. I, I find, especially when voices are way up in the mix, mm -hmm. um, they are uh, quite dominant. They mm -hmm. force you to, they always force mm -hmm. you to listen to yeah. what, the, what it's about. Yes. Uh, so if you have, uh, there's a lot of great CDs out there with great music and voices mm -hmm. that are more radio play-like, um, But how often do you play that? How often mm. do you want to hear, uh, for instance, Randy Grimes' Alice in Wonderland? Mm -hmm. uh, great, great series of CDs, um, but not something you would play as, at least I don't play, mm -hmm. as, some, as something you have in the background. Right. So, uh, and also with, you know, regular pop music, I never listen to what a lyric is no. about. No, no, no. Um, Surely it means so poetry, poetry readings. Poetry is, for me, also very hard. I, I, because then I have to think about, okay, what is poetry? What, what, what is this about? Mm -hmm. you know, that, that's where yeah. I already you know, disconnect. Yeah, but in this um, case, so in, the, in this case, the, the, vo the vocals, uh, have a, um, they are functional. Huh? So yeah. they, they uh, like I said, um, uh, what you hear is that um, uh, somebody uh, talks about uh, the sound of a tram passing by and you you don't give it any thought. But if you record that uh, tram, it suddenly sounds very uh, aggressive and uh, noisy and it has a lot of impact. And in the right after the, that conversation, uh, you actually hear that tram and you also experience what these, this person there before uh, explained. So you could also say like, so why bother <laughs> telling it? Because uh, 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 show it in, instead of uh, telling about I, it. I, I was, I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The whole uh, show don't tell or whatever. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't exactly. Show, don't, yeah. Show, don't tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what is it? Show, don't tell. That's that's the expression. That's, that's, yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. So uh, we could uh, go to uh, watch a YouTube because uh, we uh, uh, you also had uh, uh, some remarks about composition versus uh, improvisation. Um, we could take a minute uh, and look at an improvisation of uh, Richard uh, Scott. Okay, so um, <clears throat> this this sounded uh, quite different from uh, what you can hear in, uh, in the album. Um, so you, I uh, heard you had a, a bit of a, uh, I don't want to say a problem, but you uh, all, uh, think a lot about the... Uh, uh, the composition versus the improvisation that, mm -hmm. that and um so you said like um what i not really understand is what is the is, is it the fact that uh, you find it difficult to follow what someone 
does on stage or tries to tell you on stage during an improvisation? Uh, is- yes, that's that too. Uh, mm-hmm. that's, 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 that's another thing. Mm-hmm. Um, because we are now at home watching this particular clip. Mm-hmm. Um, listening to it on our headphones or speakers, mm-hmm. which is not the same thing as being in the moment in the same place as oh, the music is being performed. Absolutely. And um, and I'm thinking uh, the, the impact is not, is not the same. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, so, it's totally different. I, I yeah. agree. I mean, uh, in the 80s when we were uh, working with uh, THU20, um, we also always had this discussion about um, should we record the live recording or the, the live performances that we uh, recorded uh, as is, uh, the way they were uh, recorded, or were we allowed uh, to um, edit them into uh, something uh, different? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and the outcome of the discussion was? The, the outcome of the discussion was that... Uh, uh, a recording or listening to a uh, uh, recorded performance is quite different from being really present at, in the moment of uh, the live presentation. So yeah. um, we did uh, edit the, the live uh, recordings. Not so much. I mean, w- if we had the idea that uh, a certain sequence was okay, as, as it was, then we left it like that. But most times we, uh, well, we, we could be really uh, um, radical in, in hashing things up, even um, also um, uh, enhancing the sound of one player uh, in, in relation to, to the other players. So and and that fact alone uh, resulted in a completely different piece. Mm. So yes. Um, so that and, and I, th- yeah, I see your know, point. Th- that that's where I am at, and you know, as as uh, somebody who reviews music, mm-hmm. and also I also review improvisation music, though not as much because, frankly, I I don't uh, consider myself as somebody who knows too much about it. Mm. Um, about about improvisation music. About mm-hmm. improvisation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, but mm. I always have this, this this thing in my head that goes, yeah. But to what extent are we listening to somebody something that is you know edited into what I hear? Mm-hmm. And what's the di- what's the difference between um, uh, what was actually played when when I was there? Yeah, you could even ask the question, uh, what do I care if it's an improvisation or, or not? Yeah, true. <laughs> Very much true, yeah. Uh, and also, can you hear it? That's what I said uh-huh. earlier. Yeah. Can you hear if... Actually, I wouldn't... I don't care if it's if it's improvisation or not, or mm-hmm. post, mm-hmm. as long as it's something that I want to hear. Yeah. And that uh, the that I find interesting or that moves me or, you know, all of us or relaxes me. There's a, a lot of mm-hmm. ways to enjoy music. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I don't mind improvisation when I see one. Well, mm-hmm. m- maybe if it's really too into the world of free jazz with a lot of saxophones mm-hmm. honking about them, you know, <laughs> it's a limit. Well, that that's a matter of taste, I I think. That's that, that's 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 indeed a matter of taste. And I mean, I, I, at, I am very allergic to people uh, abusing their voices in all kinds of manner. That I really I I could sc- walk out the room screaming uh, when that happens. But looking at looking at uh, at Richard Scott here, mm-hmm. um, I can imagine that if you are there in that in that space at, yeah. at, a, at, a, at a well-known jazz festival, a jazz yeah. improvisation festival. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but sound has a, a certain physical presence that, right. uh, that we don't have, but we don't have at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we see him move like he's, you know, a free jazz piano player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> um, 
Cecil Taylor or something. Uh-huh. Uh, that, that, that's, that's, there's also an entertainment value in there to be to be seen, certain, which which, which he does very well. Yeah, I, uh, I think so too. Uh, yeah, but but if he, if, mean, he, if he would play in town, I would go. Yeah, I I mean you you were talking about uh, laptop versus modular on stage, mm-hmm. uh, so that uh, at a certain moments in time, laptops were uh, exit, the uh, persona non grata, and then you saw the the rise of the modular uh, on stage. In a certain sense, I think that uh, with a laptop, you are, in a sense, you have almost the same, I think, even more uh, uh, possibilities of creating very difficult layers of uh, electronic and processed sounds and field recordings, etc. But that was too boring for, for the audience at a certain moment. And so the modular as you could see in this film uh, this this clip also is that it's it does have although it's very tiny uh, it does have a certain uh a, a more dynamic uh, visual appearance yeah. and that's why you see like you you have these these I, I have to use my hands a bit higher these modular live performers who work like this and that and they twist a knob and they <laughs> shove a fader <laughs> in order to make the movement a bit bigger I mean, yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, i've seen i've seen people doing this with with uh with cassette players oh how yeah style, how it styles for instance is somebody <laughs> who's has a quite a physical presence yeah, as if it's lava hot when you you just can barely Touch the uh, the instrument. Yeah, well, you know, really a, a lot of a lot of musicians uh, forget that you go to a show, but you also have to put up a show. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, true. Yeah. And not like this laptop moving your mouse now and again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. Really interesting discussion. Um, let's conclude this talk because we are really uh, uh, already uh, quite I think over time but let's see what what remains and what uh, goes to the cutting floor well, cutting yeah, room floor ed- editing editing <laughs> yeah. um, but now we're improvising you have to edit it yeah exactly so for um, the final track which will be the uh, also um, accompanying the the final uh, the outro as we call it we play a part of thunder actually bicycles and thank you Franz and uh, speak to you next week again see you next week okay bye <laughs>